This is Andy Porowal for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and today I've come up to see a good friend of the channels in John Fury and um, we're going to be spending a day in the life with him. We're going to have some food, he's going to cook for us, we're going to have a walk, a stroll around, he's going to tell us some tales about his life and what he likes to get up to in his downtime away from the boxing world. So away we go, let's go find him, let's see what the day holds for us. Hi John. How are you gentlemen? How are you Andy? I'm good, it's good to see you again, it's been a while, how are things going? Oh good, you know, still chilling, still chilling as you can see. Okay uh, gentlemen. How are you finding life out here with your caravan? Enjoy every minute of it. Yeah. You know, I'm making the most of what life I've got left, Andy. You know, I'm lucky here, people today, some poor bugger stuck in office, aren't they? I'm sat in the great outdoors here, me. Chilling, living cheaply, by myself, you know, and uh, it's all good. Well, John, listen, we appreciate you letting us come up. As I've told the viewers, we're going to obviously spending a day in the life of yourself, going for a walk, uh, hopefully not a run. <laughs> I know you're a big, you're a big runner. Um, obviously, you're going to cook for us as well. So what, what are we all in store for? What should we expect from today's event? Well, listen, it's one of them, mate. You, today you're with me, so you're going to do what I do. You're going to eat what I eat, drink what I eat, drink what I drink, sorry, eat what I eat, and walk where I want to walk to. I'm listening to what I'm going to tell you. Basically, <laughs> listen. I will, I will not be upsetting you today. Mission, eh? <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, though. Listen, let's get on, let's get straight into it. Um, yeah. Let's go. Yeah, go on. We'll have a nice walk, eh? Yeah, like I said, Andy. England is the nicest place in the world when I got the weather. Cause it's the greenest country in the world, isn't it? You know, and it's uh, everything we want it to be. This walk we're going on now, John, how often would you do this? Most evenings. I've generally got the dog with me, but uh, I've left him where he is today. Because he just likes licking people, so <laughs> I've left him exactly where he is. But I come in here and get wood out the, of out the forest here. Yeah. Because it's all dry stick under there. So that's what I do. You see an eel candy? See on all there, it's all dry stick. Yeah. All that's burnable. You're not affecting anybody because you're dead anyway. What I don't do, I don't touch nothing live on the edges. Yeah. It's all dead stuff. I collect and burn it. So you're not doing anybody any harm. But you can see, even people look dispose of rubbish in a beautiful place like this, look. You know, because they don't live round here. Yeah. They don't respect it. And they say gypsies are bad. You know, there's no gypsies round here. Look at the mess of that. Terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Here's what it is. People don't care unless they live here. And I've lived here for 30 odd years, you know, and I respect the place and I try to keep it tidy, you know. When the time comes, John, and you do eventually just pitch up somewhere, where do you see yourself just settling down, whether I'll it be with your caravan? You know what, I don't want to settle down, you know. Yeah. I don't want to settle down. A week in a place is enough for anybody. It's enough for me anyway, and I'm a traveller, you know. I can't, I can't be stationary. You know, I've been in houses, spent most of my life in them, really on and off, but not for me, you know. If this was a bit wider, see, I'd love to get me, me, uh, me trailer in here, look. Yeah. Park up here, you know, but this is a, a public right away. And I'd probably get my bit anyway, so we don't bother. But about 15 years ago, when I was messing with this third runway, they chopped all these trees off the top. There was nothing here, they cut them in half. Yeah for the new runway because it was going to interfere with the planes. But they started to grow back now again, like, but it takes a long time, but they got green on them. But they didn't have green 15 years ago, it was terrible. But people come from all over the country just to stand here, look, and watch the planes. That's what they do. Oh, that is some shot, John. Wow. Yeah. They come here from all over the country to watch the planes here. I don't know why. I've spoke to people from Birmingham, London, Scotland. You know, but that's a full, full on view of the airport, isn't it? So there you have it, look. Do you come and look at this often yourself? I do. You know, I like planes and I can imagine myself going worldwide, except America. <laughs> you know, but it's one of them, isn't it? Is it hard, obviously, seeing you know, Tyson's over there often and you imagine Tommy will probably venture over there soon enough? 
not being able to travel over with them? Did you know? I mean, I've put it to the back of my mind and I signed myself like jail. I couldn't get out of jail when I wanted to, so I can't go over there when I want to, so it's the same thing. And my mind is, I've made up my mind now not to dwell on stuff I ain't got, but just appreciate stuff I've got. If that makes sense, you know. If could have would have, the funny things are, you know. John, when they're older, do you hope your children kind of go back to their roots the way that yeah, you have a little you bit? You know what? Every man can do as he want to do. I've done my work. I fetched them into the world, brought them up as men, looked after them. I can't do any more. What they want to do with their lives is entirely up to them. Even if it don't suit me, they can do what they want because they're individuals, aren't they? They're their own people. And I know what suits me definitely don't suit them. It don't suit them. And what they do don't suit me. But I'm, I'm not arming anybody. You know, I'm just doing my own thing, trying to educate people, put them on the right path. No one needs in life stress. And that's what normal day-to-day -day living is, stress. You're better off with nothing and not be stressed. Like me. I have nothing and I'm not stressed. Am I looking for anything? No. Have I got lofty, lofty ambitions? No, I haven't. Because none of it's worthwhile. And we're all the same when we meet our maker. There's no pockets in shrouds, is there? You know, we're all going to the same place and we're all on equal terms then. And then we've got to be judged by our Lord Jesus Christ and he'll say where we, where we go. Like it does say in the Bible, in my house there's many mansions. If I get to the worst one, I'll be happy. So, you've got to take days, every day as it comes. John, how important is religion to you? Listen, it's what it is, isn't it? I don't get involved in it, like I've just said. If you want to live a long time, don't talk politics. Don't talk religion and don't join the army. Oh, number four, one on my own. Don't buy a motorbike. Unless you're a very good driver or one or a rider or whatever it is. Because then you're looking to shorten your life. I keep out of everything I don't understand. I don't understand politics. I don't understand religion. I don't understand the army. I only watch it on TV in war movies. That's all I know about the army. I stay in my lane, Andy. I stay in my lane. And my lane is... I know a fair bit about boxing, I know a lot about great outdoors, I know a lot about survival, you know, because probably Bear Grylls can probably learn some of me when the chips are down. So John, obviously, as we've said, this is a day in the life of yourself, we're going for a little stroll now um, through kind of the, the wooded areas. Uh, talk to me about when you wake up, how does your day unfold, what do you get up to? Well, I wake up five o'clock in the morning when I'm living like I'm living because you get to bed early. Because I don't know why, when you're outdoors, you get tired quick of an evening. Plus, you get to bed early, you get up, you, you, you get up early. And I go for a run of a morning down these country roads here, look. You know, come back and do my me, me training regime, lasts about an hour, depending on what run I'm doing, probably an hour and a half. And uh, after that, just have a wash, do a bit of reading, a bit of, a bit of uh, contemplating on life, light the fire, have a bit of breakfast, you know, and just chill. And that's what I'm doing, chilling out. I'm chilling, ain't working. I know you love nature, John, and you love the setting yeah. you've got at the minute. Um, do you ever get bored there? No. I get bored when I'm doing general day-to-day -day living. Let me tell you, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, doesn't it? You know, you've got to rest, and that's what people don't do enough of. A week's holiday here and there ain't no good to nobody. You can't rejuvenate your body on that. Enough's enough. You've got to say to yourself, right, I'm not doing nothing for two weeks. And that's it. You know, and I know some people, it's, they find it hard to do that with the commitments of work. But uh, it depends what you want in life. Now, if I wanted that kind of lifestyle, the nice house, the nice cars, this, that and the other, I couldn't live like this because I'd have to do what they're doing. Roll into work, eight o'clock, sit in traffic for two hours every day, you know, and do the same thing rigorously every day. And I couldn't do that. So I'd rather have nothing can be free and do as I want to do.
Right, John, obviously we've had a, a little stroll. Um, but I imagine this is the journey you take in the morning. and. I think we're ready for some yeah. lunch, do you? That's the one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's basically what I was trying to work up to. Yeah, well, it's there. It's rough and ready, but it's food, it's edible. Let's go and get it. Let's go. Talk to me about what, what, are we in, what are we in store for? What are we yes, having? It's just a, bit, a pot of vegetables and a bit of meat, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? It's, listen, it's rough stuff, but it's good stuff. You know, nothing fancy. It's not restaurant gear. There's only me who can probably eat it, but that's me, you know what I'm saying? It's done me no harm. So, yeah. Experience, is my stomach going to be able to handle it? We'll see, see if you can't pass the services on the way home, innit? I'll get on with it anyway, I'll get it going. See that look? Nothing but veg in there. Do you eat sweet meat as well? So yeah, I eat yeah, meat, yeah. Yeah, I eat meat, but I'd rather the vegetables. There's everything in there. Yeah, yeah. All I need, all the nutrients you can get. That's what it is. It's two days old, that. John, three meals a day then. What do you think? Uh, three meals a day. What do you think to eat? Kind of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes, me. Yeah. Anything really. My mother. If it's edible, I'm eating it. If it's edible, I've got it in me. Not fussy. Because let me tell you something. When I was a kid. There wasn't enough food to go around and mind be picky with it. So, you know, yeah, what you've got put in front of you. And lick the plate as well. And I lived my life on bread and dripping me as a kid. You know, so I can eat anything. If it's edible, I can get it down me. You know, and that's that's it. You know, a lot of people can't do that, can they? Because they're stuck in this modern world and it's not covered in sauces or mayonnaise and all this. They can't eat it. You know, but listen, it's what it is, isn't it? That'll not poison you. You might get the odd flicker of a bit of ash off the wood or something like that, but that won't kill you. It's so extra extra seasoning, John. Well, there you go. You know, well, when you're cooking outdoors, you expect a flicker yeah. in the pan, that can't you? So I don't bother. Listen, I've been doing it all my life, and I'm still here. So I'm going along with what's good for me. Like I say, the great outdoors. And there's plenty of people do this. So it's surprising today how many people do this kind of thing. You know, because I've learnt better sense now. They're thinking, hang on, I'm going to leave the stress behind for a bit and just chill out, recharge my batteries. There's a lot better way to do that than this. John, I know you said you're a simple man when it comes yeah. to your food, but uh, are there any kind of speciality dishes that might surprise people? Like what? Anything that you might kind of whip up that nobody would expect? Not really. I would say egg jugs and stuff like that, but I'm not going to. They don't like them. I've ate them and I don't like them. You know, and... Uh, when you can get meat at the butchers for a pound a pound, why go and, why go and massacre little animals? They've got a right to live, haven't they? You know, let the butchers do it, it's their job, innit? Let the butcher do the massacring. Because I don't like hurting animals, me. But if I've got to do it to live, I'll do it, won't I? And all the time I can get it easy, I'll get it easy, won't I? When my dog can kill me a rabbit, all well, I'm done. But if he can't, it's a fair shop, innit? <laughs> Let's be honest and real here. Huh? It is what it is. So when was the last time, John, you had kind of family around and they was all mucking in and having the same type of food that you're having now? Years ago. Before the fame, before the fortune, before they all got red stuck up the rear end. You know, it was all real living then, but now it's all gone. And it's only me now. It's only me. And I don't really get on with the family because they're too modern for me and I'm too old fashioned for them and I'm stuck in my ways. I'm not going to change because I feel they was the better times. So I ain't changing. But they'll change because they want to go with this modern walk, don't they? Think for me. They look at me, my lads, and think my dad's daft. He's lost his marbles. You know, that's up to them, isn't it? What can we do? So we can do, just live out our, our existence. Well, you know something, it costs us nothing to do this. I live like this. What's this gonna cost? Tenner a week, you know? About a tenner a week. Because most of it's only vegetables. And if you eat meat any more than twice a week, it's bad for you, isn't it? So we don't need that.
Just getting nice and burnt now. A bit of ash flying in that pot, it's looking good. <laughs> Listen, I'm looking forward to it, John. Let me John, do you, have a, do you have a cheat meal? Do you what? Do you have a cheat meal? We all have cheat meals, don't we? You know. What's yours then? Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I'm addicted to the stuff. That's why I'm fat. But I, I haven't had none now for three months. We'll stop by a shop before we leave, John. We'll bring no, you back. won't. If I, eat one, if I have one ice cream, I'll eat it for a, for a month before I get over it. So I don't bother. What's your favourite flavour? I'll eat any, any ice cream. <laughs> any. I like the Argan Daz ones there, good, aren't they? The German ones. Brilliant. But listen, it's all rubbish, isn't it? Sugar is the cause, along with stress, of all ailments. Do you know that? Sugar. Sugar. Cancer feeds off sugar. And all this synthetic stuff now, it's even worse. And all that stuff, what you eat, like junk food, it's full of synthetics and additives. And this, that and the other, and it causes these bad things. You know, but what I eat here, what, 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 what are you going to feed off that? You know what I'm saying? A pot of vegetables, a bit of meat cooked in whatever, in its own fat. Can't see that happening. But listen, I'm one man's meat is another man's poison, isn't it? What okay. won't kill me, probably kill you three. <laughs> John, I'm going to grab you some sugar-free ice cream then. Nah, man, don't worry. When my body craves it, I'll go and get a, a cone. Till then, I'll leave it. I'll leave it till then. Hey. I'm trying to think off something like it. <laughs> John, I know we've, we've spoken about kind of the simple meals meals you like to eat. Um, yeah. Are you a man who likes maybe a bit of sausage and mash? Me? Yeah. I'll eat, like I say, I'll eat anything, me. I'm not bothered. Are there any meals you miss from, from being out in kind of... But out in the outdoors. Miss? Yeah. No. Because you know me, I don't get addicted to nothing. If I ain't got it, I can do without it. I'm one of them kind of people. If I haven't got it, I'll do without it. You know when you're doing your, the dinner events? Yeah. What, what are they serving up for you on these? Do you know what? It's all good food, but like I say, it's modern day stuff, isn't it? You know, it's all fast food, so I don't really bother. But I was in Wolverhampton, yeah. and they did a good, a good thing. It was like a chicken roast dinner thing, and you can see it was quality food, so I ate that. But I'll skip the ones what's been uh, packet meals. Like, I don't eat packet, packet food at all. Yeah. Fish fingers, pizzas, cheeses, stuff like that. I try to keep away from them. You're naming all of my favourite foods here, Listen, John. <laughs> they'll kill you. So you want to, they're not, you, you want to get uh, another idea of a favourite food, because in the end... But let me tell you something, when you're young, when you're young, your body can stand a lot of things, but you know when you get older, you've got to start taking care, you know? You've got to start taking care, and if you don't, you can expect all kinds of problems. And with me, I don't like hospitals, and I don't want to go there if I can help it. And if I can enhance my job, we'll try and eat right. I will. Do you ever venture down the pub, John, for, for a, a little beer? A pint? I don't drink a lot, but now and again. Now and again. But I only have what I, what I have, and that's it. I'll have a couple and leave it, and then probably six or 12 months I have any more. What's your go-to drink? Are you, a, are you a beer man? Are you a... Guinness. Guinness. 
like a pint of Guinness, yeah. Yeah, I like a pint of Guinness. Now and again, though. Yeah. Don't do it every day. Everything in moderation, so they say, innit? John, when you had like Tommy and Tyson growing up, what did they used to eat? McDonald's. <laughs> I had no say. It was the women what fed them, you know, and at the end of the day, a child eats anything. If it tastes as nice and sugary, a kid will keep eating it. So when they've had an ice cream and a McDonald's and a Kentucky chicken and all that, they won't eat good food then, because there's no taste of good food. So I take it you'd plan. still obviously be eating food similar to this whilst the other, your kids would be eating what I would used to eat at McDonald's, a KFC, what have you. Yeah, is what it is, isn't it? Is what it is, but it's not me. I can only tell them, and they won't listen, that's up to them, isn't it? But I won't push it down the neck, I know what I'm doing. But if they know what they're doing, which I don't think they do half the time, it's the speed of the world today. It's 100 mile an hour. Food's 100 mile an hour. You get it, you know. You can go in a shop and order it, it's back out then two minutes in front of you. So where's it come from? It's been pre-cooked, straight in the microwave, warmed up in front of you. So you've just got to watch what you're doing, I say. John, was up when I was growing up, if ever I didn't finish a meal, my dad would finish it. Was you the same with yeah. your kids? If they didn't eat it, I'd definitely eat it. I'd definitely eat it, believe me. I would. It's what it is, isn't it? Food was hard to come by when I was a kid. We never had notes, so when we did get it, we appreciated it. What you was know? your favourite meal growing up? Anything. Didn't have one. Was that hungry, mate? Yeah. Time we got fed. Most interesting favourite meals. Interesting getting full. You know. But it is what it is. We can't do anything about it. Life's changed. Times have changed. There's more opportunities today, aren't there? A lot more money about, see. There's a lot more money about. So with the food you've got at the minute, John, how, how do you go about storing it? I don't. So you just buy whatever you're going to use on, say, yeah, a day yeah. and then go back to the shops? Leave that in the pot. When it's empty, I'll go and boil another pot. No one right, is there? I think I was a bit of a fattiest bit of a chop. <laughs> There's no wrong with that. I don't know, John, I am enjoying it. <laughs> it's, it's nice. Tasty, yeah. isn't it? Tasty. Yeah. Just cooks in all of its own fats and juices. Yeah. Andy, what would you make for John? I'd make either a shepherd's pie, or I do, I do make sausage and mash, because um, I make a really nice mash, an onion gravy. I think you'd enjoy it as well, John. I would. Next time, well we'll, we'll flip the rolls and I'll cook for you. Why not? Why not? Yeah, John, I was just thinking then, if you was on death row, what would be your last meal? McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, curry, <laughs> fry ups, everything. Because I'm going to die anyway, so I'm going to get into it, <laughs> wouldn't I? Everything I've done without in my life, I'd make up for on death row. That's the right feed me, explode me. You better, you better die and buy food than lethal injection, aren't you? <laughs> Let me tell you, I hope never to be in that position, with the grace of God. But there's some poor people out there, through circumstance, and I feel sorry for them all. What do we do? We've got to keep going, haven't we? I'll be honest with you, John, if I was on death row, I think I'd just ask for your pork chops and your, your, your stew, because I'm enjoying this. You're only being nice to me, Andy. I'm not honest, John, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> That's not so enjoyable. Don't they taste well, though? Mm. Out of a pan? Yeah. Listen, it is what it is, life. It's life to be, meant to be enjoyed, isn't it? It's meant to be enjoyed. I'm an old man, I'm 56 years old, and I can rep out one portis. What can Tyson rep? Same, same. You do 130, 140, you'd imagine. But we're not weightlifters. Yeah. We're not weightlifters. If I could get on a bench now, and I, I, could do, I could do a set of six or eight with 140, and I'm not a weightlifter, you know? Yeah. But if I trained to be a weightlifter when I was younger, I'd probably do more. It's practice, isn't it? So this food 
keeps you strong, you know. It's like this, that day weighs two and a quarter ton. You know, I can hook that up, push it around. Not myself, I, I, you know, I hook it up myself. If it needs adjusting, I do it manually. I move all the lock and that with my hands and that, and I push it a couple of foot to get it where I want it to be. So yeah, it's done me no harm. John, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Cool. You know, I don't know, you know. I don't know. I'm not gonna say uh, animals like frogs and stuff like that, I wouldn't eat stuff like that. I just wouldn't eat them, you See? know. I haven't had much strange stuff, you know, to be honest. Never had any snails or no. anything like that? No, nothing like that, no. I had a taste of an head job one time, because I'm Bartley made it, and uh, I didn't like it. It's not for me all that, to be honest. Keep it simple, a, a bit of meat, a bit of vegetables, a bit of fruit, a few nuts. You know, I eat nuts for my breakfast, you know. I'm big on porridge as well. Yeah. But I only eat porridge with water. Hot water and porridge. No sugar, no milk. Where do you get your water from whilst you're out here? In the can. Oh, in the can. I'll go to this house across the road here. Okay. He'll give me a drop of water. Yeah. You know, and that there lasts me a few days. It's only to have a cup of tea into washing, isn't it? You know, it is what it is, isn't it? We've got it to do. The nice people, you know, you treat people with respect, you'll get it back no matter what walk of life you're from. You know, people around you, they know what I am, they know who I am, what I am. But they know I'm a respectful kind of a guy, I'm not a liberty taker. And they treat me sound. They really do, and I'm, I'm glad of that. And it makes me proud and honoured that people treat me right. Because strangers sometimes will treat you better than your own family, won't they? That's how I see it anyway. Strangers will treat you better than your own. That's been proven time and time again, hasn't it? You know? It's been proven time and time again. Ah, she's locking up just nicely there, boys. So John, how, how old was you when you first started cooking and who taught you? Nobody. That's not, that's, you don't need to be a cook to do that. That's just hot water. And 45, my mum said to me, never boil the vegetables past 45 minutes because you're taking all the things out of them. 45 minutes is enough. We overcook them and there's no in them. You know, everything come off my mum. Everything I do come off my mum. No one else. Nobody else. Well, it's, it, to me, if it looks cooked, it's cooked. If it's brown on each side, and it's not raw in the middle, it's cooked, isn't it? But you know, my mother, she used to, uh, she knew everything. The old women did, didn't they? They knew everything. And what, what you are, you are your mother and your father, aren't you? Yeah. There's only two people you're going to take after, your mum and your dad. You know, and I had good, good mother and father. So, John, if you had a lot of beef or like, if you had steak, would you have it well done, I take it? Well done, yeah. Yeah, I like cooked food. I can't eat that raw stuff. That blood coming out of it. No benefit that, is it? There you go. A bit more stick out of your head somewhere, boys. Dry stick somewhere, I should imagine I'll find some. John, what would you what would you tend to look to eat before you start exercising or before a big session? Me, I always eat two and a half hours before. You know, and I don't overdo it. You know, I just eat till I'm full and that's it. What would you have if it was before a big session? Just a load load upon carbs. Yeah. What what carbs have I when I say carbs, I just mean potatoes. Stuff like that, normal carbs, bit of porridge, you know, none, nothing synthetic. My carbohydrate consists of a day, porridge and potatoes, that's it, no more. I might have the odd couple of slices of brown only or bread or something like that, but bread blows me up, it hampers my performance. Because, you know, it just swells up in, in your stomach bread.
Listen. It's a load of crap. You know all these dietitians that come out with all this rubbish? It's all shite. It's all rubbish. It's a money making thing. You know. I can go running with the best of them. I'll do me 10k with a sprint at the end of it. I've never had really a dietitian in my life. I've never had one. Just eat clean. Plenty of good wholesome gear, mate. There, that's all you need. And plenty of sleep and no stress. And then you'll do all right. But all these people eat this and eat that, eat rice, eat this. Uh, their rice. You got a rice or a pasta man then, John? A bit of pasta's good, but the rice and all that pasta I can do without it. That soup's bad, but pasta's worse, isn't it? But they need sauces to eat pasta, you see, where it's that bland. And to me, it's like tripe pasta and it's no taste to it at all. At least for them few vegetables, there is a bit of taste to it, you know. But I'm not a dietitian, man, me. I think the best of you, you it, well, look how strong a horse is. Yeah. Horse is fed on grass and nuts, isn't it? So I can't eat the grass, so I eat plenty of nuts. You know, nuts are good. Porridge, oats, anything like that. Plenty of fruit in it. Like for my breakfast, me. I'll have some nuts, crushed nuts, porridge, a couple of bananas in it, chop an apple up in it, chop an orange up in it, you know. A few uh, them red berries, you know. And when the winter berries out, eat them. The red berries off the edge when they come out in the back end. They're a lifesaver. You see them all, red berries up and down the edge. Eat them, they're a lifesaver, them. Good for your heart, clean your arteries out. Because let me tell you something, Andy. In this life, there's a natural cure for everything. But the powers that be know this. But the pharmaceutical companies are making that much money out of what they do, selling these synthetic drugs and all that. The clever people know the cures are out there. They don't, don't want to publicise it. You know, but don't get me wrong. The, uh, there's some super drugs out there. You know, penicillin for one. You know, do a good job. But I try and keep it natural, me. And I find the berries, natural sources of food, can help you out a lot, you know. I don't take any pills at all. None. They said I had high blood pressure. I said, OK, I'll change my diet. I'll exercise more. I won't stress as much. That's better than taking a tablet, isn't it? You know? Natural cures for everything. My granny said that. You know? Yeah. And the old people, the real old gypsies going back 100 odd years ago, they know a cure for everything, my friend. Hey. When it shows you how clever they was, gypsy people at survival. Even the Black Death never wiped them out, did it? The plague never wiped the gypsies out. So they must have knew somewhat. Think of that one then. The plague never wiped the gypsies out. Because there's always in rural areas they mess with each other. They didn't bother with the outside world much. But they knew some bloody good cures. And most of them are right before your very eyes and you can't see them. I can't see them. I wish I could. But what I picked up over my life from me, from the older people, I try and use it, you know. And to ignore good advice, that's the work of a fool, is it not? Work of a fool. I'm not coming across as knowing everything, but I'm just experiencing yeah. life I'm putting across to you, you know. Because I don't know anything at all. I'm not academically clever. I hardly went to school. I can just about read and write. Some big words that no chance of even reading or spelling. But I get by. You know, because you, because you're not academically clever doesn't mean you're a, a fool, I think. It means that you're not the best start in the world and you've got to do what you've got to do. Coming from where you come from. When you go back 70 years ago, no gypsies could read. None. Only a certain few. And if you've got a gypsy what can read, well, you have plenty of friends. Will you write this letter? Will you send that letter? Will you read this? Will you read that? That's what it was all about. It was a big thing, but now all, all people can read, you know? But I'm a getter buyer. I only want to get by. I don't want to do nothing lofty or be anything clever. We just want to get by and do what we do and get from day to day with no ailments. As long as you wake up with no problems in the morning, 
you're doing well. That's a good start in your day. Keep out of trouble. And I've been in plenty. And I never realised about the trouble thing until I was 40 odd year old. I was 45 before it triggered in me head. I had everything else right. But the trouble side of it kept getting in trouble. You know why? Ego. I was letting ego get in the way of my life and getting me in trouble. But now I know, having a big ego, is silly and it's the work of a fool. And I've been a fool for being like that. But I've learnt my lesson. And sometimes lessons are harsh. But if you come out the other end, you've won, haven't you? People who keep committing the same mistakes twice, there's something wrong upstairs, isn't there? You know, and when I was in jail, I could only dream of this. This is what kept me going. And I thought, if I can just get freedom, keep the rest of the world, just give me freedom and $10 to buy some food, and I'm, I'm happy. And this is how this has come about now, full throttle with me. Because where I was, mate, this is only a dream, a pipe dream. John, jail's not really something I've ever really spoken to you about. Um, what, what was the experience like for you being inside? For me, being a travelling man and one in the great outdoors, well, a horror story, a nightmare. The worst kind of a nightmare is to be locked up, especially when you used to being free and doing as you want to do and going where you want to do as you wanted. But clever people and strong people, mind and body, can adjust. And I adjusted early on saying, right, I'm not going to get out of this. I'm probably going to get 20 years or 25 years. Might even get life. But I thought, it's better than being dead. When I was looking at 25 years in prison, because I was, IPP, indefinite public protection, all that, it was mentioned to me. I'm going to get this, I'm going to get that. But I thought, OK, then, here's where we're at. My life for a new outside is over. So I've got to adapt now and make a new life. And if you're dead in a coffin with the worms eating your body, that's nothing. But at least I thought in jail, I can eat drink, watch television, talk to somebody, no matter who he may be, get a visit. You can do something. I thought, it's better than being dead. It's not much better than being dead, but I'd rather be in jail than dead. Because in dead, you know, the dead know nothing. But in jail, there's letters, there's phones, there's visits, you know, there's everything. You're just not free. You're like him in there, my friend Henry here. But Henry's freer because he's out here with me. And he's only in there for his own protection. Because if he gets out of there, he'll be dead within 60 seconds because the wild birds will kill him. But he's here, he's whistling, and talking to his relatives under my watchful eye, in case he don't get assassinated by orcs and magpies. <laughs> when you was inside, John, did you run into any trouble? No. No, I didn't. I kept myself to myself and I thought about it. I thought, you know what? I've got to keep my hands in my pockets here. If I want to get out, I've got to let a lot of stuff go over my head. And I let a lot of shit go over my head. You know what I'm saying? And I thought, what do you want to do? Stay in here forever. But I put my ego at the back of me. I thought, yes, when in Rome, do as Romans do. My ticket out of here is good behaviour. And taking no heed of dickheads. And stupid people. You know, because everybody in jail is a barrister. They all know everything and know nothing. But I was one man that kept his own counsel. I kept my own counsel. I did my own thing, went to the gym, done my work, done what I was told. Yes sir, no sir, three bags full and here I am. Enjoying the great outdoors. So I'm the clever one. I've won. I've won. But did they treat me well? The prison service? Yes they did. Yes they did. They gave me good jobs. They said straight, John, Fury, they called him, call you my first name, Fury two ways to do jail. You can either have it hard or easy. That's up to you. I will take the easy route. And all you've got to do is give respect to the powers that be. They're doing a the job. They're in control of your life. If they say it's Tuesday, it's Tuesday. If they say run, you're running. If they say walk, you're walking. It's not rocket science, is it? I know I can soon be the man I was when I get out. But when I get out, I wasn't the man I was. I was half a decade inside. You're never the same. I'd aged. I'd aged and learnt a lot. I learned to keep myself to myself and have no opinion on nothing. Just express my feelings and tell the truth. How much do you regret uh, your decision before going, after going into prison and what gave you your sentence, your, your criminal act? I don't know, you know, it's a good question, you know. I 
travel man's pride, he'll die for it. And that's the problem with me. My pride's threatened, my father's name's threatened. I'll stand up to the plate. If it cost me my life, I'll deal with it because there's no for a traveller and worse than being called a shit house, called this, that and the other. And you know if a man's there and he says something to you, and he's in your face and he's in your space, I'll respond. I don't want it, I don't know kind of trouble, but if I've got to have it, I'll bring hell to breakfast and they'll be the loser. But I'll be going to jail for 25 years again. So I try and keep out of it, that's why I'm here. Because I'm very, I'm an extremely violent man when it comes down to the old fisticuffs, because I'll do anything I can to win. And I call street fighting, street fighting. It's a dangerous job. And I'm a dangerous dude. I'm a dangerous dude. I'll do whatever I can. And I'll need to the moment when that red mist comes, I don't even know I'm doing it. Until the bracelets are on and saying, right, Mr. Fury, you're going to prison for 30 years. Okay, judge. I knew that, I did it, hands up. I was a fool, but if I've got to die, for my father's name I will. Because of your aggressive side of you're talking about, John, uh, in the past, obviously, there was talk about the Mickey Theo fight. That never happened. But do you think we could see you take part in some form of an exhibition contest at some point just to...? No, no, because I don't do exhibitions. It's all or nothing with me. It's either real or not. It's either real. People who want to make a name off my name, it ain't happening. Am I going to put dollars in people's pocket? No. If they want to fight me, come and fight me for free. Step up, fight me for free. Stand in front of me. Don't go looking all over where I'm not at. Come to where I'm at. I'm easy to find. Come to me alone. Come to where I train. Manchester Fight Club. That's where I'm at. That's where I can be in three minutes most of the time. So if you want to fight me, come to me. Come to me. There'll be no shying from me. Step in my face, they'll come into breakfast, mate, because I know I can fight. Outside, unbeaten. Yeah, I got stopped in the ring a few times. Not fit. They're professional athletes, and I couldn't use what I had. I couldn't do what I can do best, and I'm a street fighter. People want to say I'm no good. Come on, fight me. Come on, fight me. That's what I say to people. Step in my face. Come to me. Come to me. Don't talk down a phone. Don't talk across the internet. Come in my space. I'm not going to go looking for nobody, but men meet before mountains. And when they do, hell's coming to breakfast, boy. And I mean that to any man out there who thinks he can take John Fury. Because I'm the best street fighter out there. There's nobody can beat me. Because I'm willing to die and give me life and get 35 years before I lose. And I'm a dangerous mother, believe me. You don't get 12 years for nothing. You don't get to the public enemy number one spot for being an idiot, do you? For being some man who says, oh, lives on that imagination. I'm the real deal, mate. And the power that being on the real deal, real deal and all. And they're just waiting for me to make one mistake. Because they all want to life me off. They want to see the, my demise, because now they don't think I should be doing this. I shouldn't be enjoying life. But I'm a clever man. But come in my face, and I'm prepared to get 35 here again. Come in my face. That's all I say. And that goes out to anybody who thinks they can take me today or any other day. Have you had many people, especially over this past, say, four or five years, when everyone's gotten used to seeing more of your face, whether it be on TV or on an interview online, have you had people try it with you, whether they be sober or drunk? Have you had interactions? Yeah. It's finished in one way. Them splattered up the floor and their head kicked off. <laughs> hey, that's how it happens. Brains kicked out and flattened up the floor. Because if a drunken man tries to put it on me and I've had a drink, he's in some serious trouble, isn't he? But I'll walk away from a drunken man. I'm not interested in drunken man. I'm not interested in loud mouth, loud mouth people. I'm not interested in idiots really what can't fight. I'm interested in men what can fight, i.e. them champions. And at the minute, I'm trying to put some up with Riddick Bow together. Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, all them men what's my age love to fight them. I want to fight them. Are you, are you actually looking into that then, John? I'm looking you... into it, yeah. Looking into it. I said I'm open to fighting any of them. Because what they was then and what they are now are two different things. And I know I'm good enough to be in with anybody. You know, I'll hold my own and people will get value for money. But I won't do an exhibition. I don't want an exhibition. That goes out to all of them. If you want to knock me out, get it done. I'm going to try and do it to them, and people will get value for money with John Fury. Because there's no fake man here, won't be no exhibition. If they say to me, John, do an exhibition with Mike, do an exhibition with Evander, do an exhibition with Riddick Bow, all them others, the answer's no. I want a proper fight. They'll probably kill me, the men. But I'll tell you, I'll give a good account of myself, I'll do me utmost and my best. Believe me, I will. 
because even when I was in the ring, I took fights without fit. This was my training diet here, look, a pot of food, nothing. I'm doing a bit of jogging up the road, hitting a bag tied to a tree or something. I've still got to number three in Britain, and number five in Europe, and I'm number 30 odd in the world. You know, I fought some good men and beat some good men. But I never the training these men's doing today. Not half of it. No dietitian, no proper thing, nothing. Got in after a day's work. No lay down for me, go and eat my food two hours before. Put my feet up for ten minutes and then go and do eight rounds of ten. Do you miss those days, the bare knuckle boxing days, John? I miss what I was. Yeah. I miss the man I used to be, the no backward steps. Because you know if a man looked at me the wrong way, take his jaw off. If he blinked at me the wrong way, he'd be getting it. If you're sarcastic, he'd be getting it. And I miss that man, you know, I miss him. But now time's moved on, Andy. The jail, the police, this new world order. It cracks up if you think about it. And I know they don't want people like me on the street if they can help it. They'd rather people like me locked away. They'd rather people like me locked up, because they know what you stand for. And they think there's only one way of dealing with him, that's to shoot him. That's to shoot him. And that's what they're going to have to do. Shoot me. But I say, don't, don't mess with me. Don't aggravate me. Don't come in my space. Don't come near me. Leave me alone. Treat me with the utmost respect. I'll treat you with the utmost respect. But try and give me shit. I'll give you shit the right way. Maim me for life. That's it. End of. We'll just not discuss it anymore. Because I'll get violent even talking about it. <laughs> I don't know. Swan. A dietitian. Man's food. What do you prefer, John, your cooking or the food in prison? Hey. What do you prefer, your cooking or the food in prison? This, but the food in prison weren't bad, you know. What did you used to get? You know, in strange ways, you got steak. Oh, wow. It was a lot of gristle in it, like, but it was still steak. It wasn't quality of stuff, but it, you know what? People go on about jail food, it ain't bad, you know. It's not bad. People go on about jail full stop, it's not, it, you listen. If you didn't like the great outdoors, and you didn't like getting your leg, and you didn't like getting your leg over and stuff like that and enjoying life. Well, prisons are prisons are doddle. But when you got family out here and you live like I live, it's hard work. Total. So what we do is keep out of that job. Keep out of it. Right, gentlemen, carry on. Just try that first because it's very, yeah. it's hard work. Believe me, boys. Go on, see how you're going with that first. Ah. I'll do mine at the pan. Not too good, is it? It's all right. Going uh, and he's some man, mate. Give you the due. He's some man, kid. I've eaten worse. There's no trouble with that. I'm not just saying it to be nice, John, but I honestly think you're right in what you say, but longer it's like been there for, it yeah. only tastes better. Yeah, honestly. Listen. Don't mean I have. Believe me, and you know that eating out of a pan like that tastes better again. Yeah, that gives you fuel for the 10k, mm -hmm. all of that. Well, I'll figure it How often do you go for like a 10k run? Or do you ever I'll tell you what I do. Just go? I'll get up in the morning, Monday morning, 10k. 
Tuesday, two miles. 10k, I say 6.6 .6 mile, yeah. which is 6.2 mile 10k. But I do six mile of a Monday, two mile Tuesday, four mile Wednesday, two mile Thursday, three mile Friday. I'll do another 10k Sunday, one day with rest. Yeah. So I'm on it. It's a lot of running. Yeah, I'll go to the gym in the night time as well. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely will. Credit to you, mate. There's not much taste to that, but listen. Pure veg in it. Yeah. I'm kind of used to it because I'm only eating chicken and vegetables at the minute, twice oh, yeah. a day. I thought you'd lost a bit of weight. I'm trying to lose weight. I put a stone and a half on over lockdown, so I've lost half a stone. I want to lose the other stone. I'm down to 19 stone from 24 stone. Jesus. Mm. What's the goal? What's the aim? I'm going to try and get down to about 17 and a half yeah. if I can. I'm sure by the end of the summer I will be. Because you are what you eat, aren't you? When you're going running, are you, are you running on the roads or are you just running kind of around this no field? Because this field's quite... No, I run on the road. I've run on the road all my life. Yeah. yeah. I've run on the road all my life. Say the knees and all this job. Got bad knees, don't run on it. All right, guys. It's I've been Andy Purrawal for Boxing Social. This has been John Fury, and John, thank you for cooking us lunch. Listen, you're a man of my own heart, Andy. You bet what I bet today, and credit to you, son. Take me to you. John, my listen, own, my own <laughs> sons can't eat that. I think people would rather eat a rat than eat that, but believe me, you've done well. But it's not that it's bad, not, is it? No, it isn't far from it. You know, when it's simple, you know, it is what it is. John, yeah. next step, I'm going to buy a tent and we're going to pitch up overnight. Listen, you're welcome, Andy, all the time. I get, I get on with you all, don't I? You know, but listen, it's not about just doing videos, is it? It's an insight, isn't it, yeah. to how people go on, in it? It's an insight. Well, I'll show you inside my here, look. Get that camera in here. Look at that. Cold War. I've got my nice comfy chair in there. My bed at the back. Plenty of blankets underneath me and on top of me. Wood burning stove in the winter. Little table and chair. I see a couple of magazines there, John. Are you, are you a Sudoku man or? Nah, the classic motors. You see them? No, classic commercials. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm into most of these kind of things, you know. Old stuff again. I just love the old outdoors thing, but like I say, a bit of reading and whatever. But like I say, you don't need much more than that. I can live like that for the rest of my days. I don't need nothing else, me. Whatever the world's got off for now, to me, you can keep it, because I've been through too much. All I want is peace. A bit of peace of mind. And I'm getting it, doing what I'm doing. And if I'm going to keep getting peace of mind, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah.